I love this man's work. I'm thrilled that he's back here on the show. He was on as part of his uh, Emmy Award winning work in Modern Family. Now in season two uh, of Duncanville, the animated comedy on Fox that premiered past this past weekend with two episodes. The man who plays uh, Duncan's father in this, a, uh, let me get this right, classic rock obsessed plumber, Ty Burrell, back here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Ty? Hi, Rich. I I am great, if for no other reason than to listen to Ed O'Neill talk for <laughs> a few minutes. Yeah, you know, we that, just we just guy. we just played that, and I, I I give me your give me your give me your best Ed O'Neill story. Do you have one, Ty? You got a, You got one? From, oh my gosh! Please. Uh, you know Ed. So Ed basically taught us how to act on television, even <laughs> though some of us had thought we kind of knew what we were doing. Uh-huh. Ed. Ed really showed us the tricks of the trade, and by the tricks of the trade, I mean how to do the absolute least, uh, give the absolute least amount of physical effort possible and still get through your day. And so Ed, we actually wrote this sort of like, it's a fake book about all of Ed's wisdom. Mm -hmm. But Ed, so the perfect place for to do any scene is in a car for Ed. (laughs) Because you get, you're sitting down. You don't have to move. There's no blocking, and uh, you don't have to wear pants. <laughs> so, so in, when you're talking about a scene with you know the writers or the director or whatever, Ed would always say, or I mean, you know, with you know, winking at us like. Mm-hmm. Is there any reason that this scene can't be in a car? <laughs> <laughs> oh my and gosh! If there's no obvious reason that he was going to lobby for it to be in a car. Well, one of my favorite stories that he told when he he's been on the show multiple times, Ty, and one of the favorite stories that he told that is on our YouTube uh, archives was getting the role of Al Bundy, and he get, yeah. and and that that his way. Uh, that everybody who auditioned for the role played it big, played it big, sort of like Jackie Gleason, honeymooners type right. big. And he, right. he had an uncle, he said that was totally resigned, that would, that, that everything would go be going crazy in the house and the house would be falling down. And he would just look and say, yeah, what's for dinner? And he said that that's the way he played it smaller and less, you know, and, 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 and took it in the other direction. And they're like, that's our guy. That's how he got the well, you know, that's, that's kind of that's kind of part of the genius of Ed is that, um, you know, he can throw away a joke better than anybody I've ever known, and 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 it's something that you can try to do. You know, you can try to imitate that, and and it definitely serves you really well to go to play to underplay a joke a, a lot of times. But there's nobody who can do it like him. Um, he, he he would just. Be, Putting once again, putting the least amount of effort into the line, made it ten times funnier, and it's kind of his his genius. Well, you've got the, a lot of that too, Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell here on the Rich Eisen Show. Before we get to Duncanville, I want to keep pulling on this because, and I mentioned this the last time you were on the show. I might do it every time that you come on here, Ty. Is a video you did for Funny or Die, the old Funny or Die, right. called the Rant Writer. Where, the rant writer, where, of course. where you were, you played a writer who was hired by athletes and coaches to write the rants for them. Like you, you, you made it seem like every rant from "We Are Who They Thought They Were" from Dennis Green to "Practice" by Allen Iverson to Mike Tyson <laughs> saying some of the most unmentionable things. That you made it seem like you were the writer behind all that, and they were just acting out your your words and your spirit. And that is one of the funniest sports related videos i have ever seen ty i you know I, we had so much fun making those and we did make a second one that you know because you can't really keep up with all the rants no, you can't. like like the, i feel like you know we're we're overdue because <laughs> there's M- conor mcgregor and you know there's there's just it's... there's all of these people that it, that just peeling stuff off like <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like we're way overdue. There's almost too much content. <laughs> Conor McGregor would be a perfect one for that right McGregor's now. A, McGregor's, McGregor's a good one. 
You know, um, another one too, I mean, just in going in the same way that you can go in the other direction is Belichick, you know, with his silences yes. and with oh, his one word funny. answers. I like that. You know, you I like know, that. That, could, that. Basically like the, the whole thing, the whole uh, rant is, is me trying to really show restraint. Yes, and, exactly. And, and like, just saying like, you, <laughs> yeah, just saying one and two word responses. Yeah. And that's, this is where you told him to give the look. The roll the eyes. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. I love that. Ty Burrell here on the Rich Eisen Show. So are you fired up about the acquisition of Matthew Stafford here? Um, I Very know, much. What do you make of that, Ty? Very much. I love that we, I mean, uh, we, we got him a bunch of speed. Um, I'm super curious about Tutu Atwell. I mm. mean, who can't root for a... Five nine one sixty five guy <laughs> yes. in the NFL, um, but yeah, I think Stafford. You know, uh, I I didn't really follow the the Lions, you know, much, but he always seemed like he had crazy arm talent and um, the ability to kind of you know do you know. I think there's we've got to make sure we're we're really establishing uh, the run game so he's not running around all the time. Right. Uh, crazy, but but um, I'm excited about it. So now, how did you first come to love the Rams? I mean, how far back does your Rams fandom go? It goes, it goes back to birth. Um, uh, uh, I was, uh, I'm Dan Pastorini's son. <laughs> um, no, no. Um, I wow, that's can I, can I can I have that as a scoop, Ty? Can I is that a is it <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all yours. That's all yours. Run with it. Um No, when I was a kid, we lived in Oregon. My all my relatives lived in Los Angeles mm-hmm. and they would send us Rams gear as part of like, you know, just our way of keeping in touch with each other. So the gear became symbolic to all these family members that I loved and didn't get to see. And so then when they moved to St. Louis, um, it was really no skin off of our back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of people jumped off the Rams because of feeling betrayed Mm -hmm. in L.A. Um, We were in Oregon, and it was like, well, we're still just going to see them, you know, back then, like three times a year on television. Right. So so we stayed fans. We were really committed St. Louis Rams fans. And... um, and then in this weird, like, uh, you know, almost like an eight-year-old, like, boy's daydream, they, they, I was in L.A. shooting Modern Family, and they moved back to Los Angeles while I was there. Right. And if, 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 if you know, if I wasn't already a narcissist, I was, you know, pretty <laughs> sure the world rotated around me when the Rams moved back to the town I was living in. Well, I mean, your co-star uh, also considers the Chiefs revolving around him from Modern Family yeah. as well. So yeah. maybe you caught a little bit but of the Stone Street. they didn't move for him. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's they didn't move for Eric. And well, they moved for me. Eric would have thrown himself on the train tracks before that happened anyway. He would never have allowed that to <laughs> yeah, happen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if that was that's ever true. Really, I mean, you know, that's, so true. that's for sure. So that is, that is great. Have you been to SoFi yet? Have you set foot in that? Jewel I, off the floor. I have five. not. I it's have a, not. We're I'm I'm commuting from Utah nowadays of all places. Um so I'm not in LA a ton at the moment. So um, are you giving me are you are you giving me the scoop that the Rams are moving to Utah now? Is that what you're oh, saying? They're coming here next. <laughs> they're coming here next. Because that's what they do. Right? Uh, wherever I move. <laughs> I'll move to Modesto and they're coming to Modesto. That's really weird how they do that. But um, look. Um, uh, but uh, now that the world is sort of, you know, uh, the earth seems to be sort of rotating again, mm-hmm. I'm very excited to get down there. And There's and see nothing again. like a time. I'm serious. It's like looking if, really? you've, if you've ever if you've ever looked into uh, virtual reality VR goggles for anything. Yeah, that's what this is. You're, like you're watching a game really? in a VR goggle. It is the sight lines and no matter where you are up top, down below. The translucent roof that, by the way, is not attached to the stadium, so I'll give you a heads up that it, it does get cold in there. Um, I mean, it is, it is, I've never seen anything like it, ever. It's unreal.
It's that it's that it is that worldly, huh? Well, I mean, also compared to no offense, you know, where they've been playing the last couple of years too. You know, like to go from right. you know, where where you know, Calvin Coolidge probably once brought in the Olympic torch, <laughs> you know, to, to this. Uh, you know, uh it's it's unreal. It's truly unbelievable. Oh, really I'm is. so excited. You should be. I'm so excited. You should be. So I, yeah. So you're planning to go to some games this year or it depends on Yeah, you know, for sure. Okay, okay cool. I definitely will. I think I think uh, you know, I, I get accused of being overly optimistic all the time. My my brother gives me crap about that. Mm-hmm. But I, I I think every one of my teams is always is gonna win the championship in whatever sport it is every year. And well, I mean, you know, also I, that, I think that we're, this is the home of uh, Justin Herbert as well, Ty. So I mean, you know, so you also like the other guy so here in that building too. Here's a little bit of a secret. Okay. Which I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but by the way, this sounds like you're, on, this sounds this sounds like a character from Modern Family where you're you're putting your hand next to your mouth and you're telling yeah, yourself. I, I, yeah, this is <laughs> this is straight to camera. Okay, great. that's what I'm about to say. Okay. This is directly to camera. <laughs> um, when the Rams aren't on, I do watch the Chargers because <laughs> I'm such a Herbert fan. Why not? And I think I'm supposed to not watch the Chargers because we're sort of supposed to be rivals now, mm. but um. But I, I, I cannot help but watch. I love that kid so much. I mean, he is such an amazing person, too, um, and just cr- crazy talented. Um, I can't wait to see what happens in his career. It's amazing. It's He is and has been um, towards the end of last year and certainly in this whole draft season and a talent evaluation season and free agent season. He is the shorthand of the new unicorn in the NFL that everybody right. wants that he is the new short. Like, can the guy be like Herbert is basically what you're hearing about. So right what now. do you think? Why do you think there were doubts about him? Great question. What, what's your take on why he dropped? Because there's always I mean, not even that he even dropped. That no, much, no, but. no. I know that. Like, why would Miami go with Tua over him? Because Tua, they also Tua, yeah. Miami, Tua had Miami at hello. Like, literally, we're talk, talk that Miami was infatuated with him the minute that he stepped on the field in that national championship game for Alabama. Um, and right. then Burrow, Burrow threw. I mean, geez, the guy threw sixty touchdowns and won the Heisman in the national right. championship. So you put right. all that together, and you know it's not in a vacuum, but right. um, but everybody's got red flags when they come out of college. It's a it's a nitpicking business, but the it, fact his that his red flags seem to be that he was you know they felt like maybe he was too humble in mm. a way, like too too quiet in the huddle, or they weren't sure he could be a true a leader in that way. Which I felt like, man, you really are to your point. Like that is really nitpicking because. Yeah. Everything else that you see and all of his on paper and everything is just amazing. And, and, and his teammates in college thought he was a great leader. And even the crazy thing um, is, too, Ty, is that he didn't start the season the way he got a start is because the backup, you know, had a, uh, you know, right. had a, a, a terrible Tyrod mishap Taylor, happen right. Right, right, right before kickoff. The coach even said, you know, uh, that, that he wasn't the starter after almost damn near beating Mahomes without knowing right. until five seconds before he had to do that. Right. And then right. and then and then when it all comes down to it, the Chargers wanted Brady first and you can't blame them. And they might not have ever no. drafted him. But it's the way it all right. works out in the world, man. It's right. unreal. Right. It really is. Oh, he, he, I'm, I'm so happy to see him taking advantage of it. He, he's, he's incredible. Ty Burrell, before I let you go, let's talk about Duncanville. Season two of this animated comedy um, premiered this past weekend with two episodes. Um, I, is this the version of Ed O'Neill likes doing everything in the car that you don't have to be on camera here? Did you get to do oh, a voiceover? It really it's is. Funny. And it what really is. is. <laughs> Next time I'm in a live action show, I'm just going to ask, is there any reason this can't be animated? <laughs> because... It really is. It is. It is. Um, I might as well be in there in a robe <laughs> with coffee. It is so. It's such a delightful way to work. And if you're, if you're sort of, you know, a professional idiot like I am, you you just there's nothing better than going in and and making stupid voices for two or three hours twice a week. Um, it really is like in some demented way it, it just makes me so happy but this show is really it's really um funny and populated with super talented people it's it's um mike and julie scully and he he you know was with the simpsons for years and mm-hmm. years and amy poehler who is sort of 
you know, without peer, in my opinion, in terms of just being brilliant. And she she plays both the mom and Duncan in, in the show, and she's sort of ridiculous, you know, as we all know, just ridiculously talented and an equally nice person. And um, it has that feeling of, uh, in my opinion, of being sort of like a great joke machine in the way that this, the Simpsons is. Mm-hmm. Um, just like if, especially during the pandemic, both making it and watching it, uh, it is one of those just great, uh, escapes, at least it was making it. And I hope it is for people watching it. It's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard, hard laughs. And how close are you to this soul patch wearing classic rock obsessed plumber with the, you know what? It's funny when I first, when they, when I they heard that description, mm-hmm. I heard it as a classic comma rock obsessed yes comma plumber and i was like for i'm just dumb enough that for like 20 seconds i was like are plumbers like really into geology <laughs> I, wait is this a thing that i don't know about <laughs> like, um and then i was like oh right uh i uh oh, i'm probably further i'm much further away from this character than i was from phil Dunphy. this guy is like <laughs> super hyper emotional he's like got a hair trigger temper he's barely he's just hanging on that's like he's just every episode is him just hanging on uh emotionally just trying to either either the depths of sadness or the like the the height of ecstasy he's he's all over the map and he he was raised gerald mccraney plays oh yes um my dad in the second episode he's just you know he's amazing um, but he gives you an idea of why the, my character's name is Jack. Jack is just all he's trying to do is just be a better dad than his dad was. And um, Gerald McCraney's in the second episode giving us, you know, living proof as to why Jack um, is what he is. Because Gerald McCraney's sort of this great centini of a dad who's, you know, just brutal. He's so funny in it, um, but he's he's pretty brutal to Jack. So Same. it's. It's a fun ride. Hey man, I mean the dads that, that your your character gets and 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 everything you do, Jared McCraney in this one, and then Fred Willard before. I mean you're. They're, oh my god! Oh my gosh, yeah, right? I've been I mean, so lucky. <laughs> How about that, Fred? Fred's, you know, I'll, I'll say this over and over again, but Fred had the most influence in my comic point of view of anybody um, alive, and I think there are a lot of a lot of you know comic actors that were influenced by Fred through mm. all of the Christopher Guest stuff. And I mean, there was nobody, nobody better at playing good nature. I mean, he kind of invented that good natured, <laughs> oblivious guy, or, or at least he perfected it. Well, waiting for Guffman is perfect for that, where he, where he asks if they, he should strike the stool from, from the, uh, <laughs> yeah. from the set where he's just trying out for the role uh, in some <laughs> local theater. I mean, just, and he's so oh, proud right. that he knows the, the term strike. strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. So good. Ty, thanks for the call. I really appreciate uh, the time and um, you and everything and your sense of humor. And, and certainly when you come on the show, it, it delights. Uh, I appreciate it. Let's do this more often if you're up for it. I, I would love that. Thanks, Rich. It's, it's always a pleasure, man. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, I need to know where you are so I know where the Rams are moving. So I need to be yeah, up yeah. on that. Yeah, I'll keep you. I'll, keep, I'll you. send you a, a yeah. GPS point. Please do that. Please do that. Tag me, as yeah. they say. Check out, again, yeah. new episodes of Duncanville on Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Thanks for the call, Ty. Thanks, pal. That's Ty Burrell, everybody, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Oh, man, that was funny, funny, funny. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. <laughs> Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.